Netflix's favorite wine-drinking besties are back for a second season, but has it been worth the wait? Let's talk about it. Dead to Me was one of those shows that flew under the radar when it premiered last year. It was one you would sit down, binge all in one sitting, eat seven bags of Skinny Pop, and then you would look up, dust off the crumbs, and ask, did anyone else hear of Dead to Me? And turns out, yes, everyone loves Dead to Me just as much as you do. To catch everyone up to speed, Dead to Me stars Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini as two women who meet in a grief support group shortly after Jen's husband dies in a car accident. Dead to Me creates its own genre that I call depression comedy because it has its characters go through all of these deeply emotional situations while also being regularly hilarious because Christina Applegate cannot be not hilarious. While this might not work for everyone, I have to say that I appreciate the way that this show explores dark subject matter with an honestly humorous edge. Now I can't get into season two of Dead to Me without giving away some season one spoilers, so if for some reason you haven't already watched it, get Get out of here, my audience retention will just have to deal with it because I do recommend season one. And I will say that I will give some season two spoilers in this video, but I'm gonna have a whole section of that after I give you my grade, so stick around a little while. In season one, we learn that Judy and her boyfriend Steve are responsible for the car accident that killed Jen's husband, and that is why Judy joined the support group to try and befriend Jen and make things right. I know it's messed up, it's some real gone girl shit, but then at the end of season season one, Jen ends up killing Judy's boyfriend, Steve, because the last episode ends with Steve's body floating in Jen's pool. Season two picks up where season one ends, and Jen and Judy have a body on their hands. I thought that this was the perfect setup for another season to push things forward, because we already have this morbidly humorous show, and now we have these two suburban winos, they have to cover up a crime? That is the most perfect bonding activity that could bring them closer together. I'll tell you right now, I got more content than pros with this show because I think that it stretches out this dead body scenario and milks it completely dry while filling in time with these boring subplots that I did not care for, but I don't want to give anything away, so I'll get into that in the spoiler section. Let's talk about the good, shall we? Christina Applegate is on point as Jen. She crushes it just as hard in this season as she did in the first one. She's been doing great work for decades, but I think this is the role that really suits her strengths. She's so good in all of the emotions scenes, but she's also really good in all of the scenes that display Jen's bitchy nature. In fact, I think she's so good that she actually takes some of the scenes that I thought were kind of poorly written and makes them really watchable. This is a good opportunity to talk about a problem that I have with this show because I know that with this premise, there's a unique tonal balance to maintain throughout the show, but with our characters jumping from dark subject matter to then telling jokes that don't really land so well, it all comes off as a bit melodramatic. I think it is season two to episode four where Jen and Judy are at this bar and they're having this deep conversation and they're crying in front of each other and then they hit the dance floor and jam out to an erasure song that pretty much sums up dead to me. Linda Cardellini is also one of my faves. I've been standing her ever since she played Velma in that BS early 2000s Scooby-Doo movie. If you want me to cover Scoob, you gotta let me know in those comments. I really appreciate what Cardellini tries to do with the role, but I don't think the writing does her any favors because she jumps from being erratic to this like very sympathetic character. She's so all over the place. I feel like they just use her for plot conveniences, which is a bummer because she's supposed to be a co-lead and they kind of just treat her as a pawn to use around Jen's storyline. But at least we have Cardellini doing her best with the role. Season two of Dead to Me offers more of the same if you're just looking to revisit the world that these characters live in. The Can you tell I'm drinking? Season 2 of Dead to Me offers more of the same if you're just looking to revisit the world that these characters live in. This story is bogged down with cheesy subplots, but the great acting from the likable leads makes for a watchable show. I'm gonna give Season 2 of Dead to Me a 2.5 out of 5. Now I'm gonna get into the Season 2 spoilers. It is spoiler time. This is your one and only warning to get the hell out of here. Season 2 makes one central mistake that I just couldn't get past, and that's that they bring back James Marsden to play the twin brother of Steve, who is now looking for Steve, who is believed to be missing, even though we know he's dead, and he's like the good twin, and he even becomes romantically involved with Jen. All of it was so bad. It was so soap opera, it was so cheesy, and it was just plain dumb. 
I get it. I like James Marsden too. I think he actually really fits in with Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini. I can get wanting to keep him around. But no, it was such a mistake. And also, let's just talk about how this show takes place right after season one. It's like same timeline, right? If they had just jumped forward, like six months even, some of this would have made sense. But when you look at the big picture, you're like, okay, so Jen's husband died two weeks ago, and now she's sleeping with the twin brother of the man that she murdered? No. Somehow that wasn't as bad as Judy's storyline. Because like I said, I feel like she's used as just a plot convenience throughout this entire show. And it feels like they had no idea what to do with her. For the first half of the season, she's crying about her ex-boyfriend Steve, you know, being dead and having to bury his body and stuff. And that kind of adds some layers to her character that are completely diminished as soon as they reach the second half of the season. And Judy begins a lesbian relationship... I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know if in season one there was some throwaway line that revealed her to be bisexual. I don't remember it, and I don't really care. Judy was set up to basically be a straight character, and I don't really care. Maybe she wants to explore. Who cares? Whatever. But it was just so cheesy and lame the way that they just decided to make her all of a sudden start dating a woman out of nowhere while she's also grieving the death of a man that she buried like it was all just so bad and i'm sorry but especially as far as the queer elements it just felt like it was pandering so hard and i felt like that was so dumb maybe there is a large contingent of lesbians that love this show and they just kind of wanted to appease them but when you have a character who is mostly straight who then gets in a queer relationship and then all of a sudden pulls out because like you know they're just not in a good place that's not how you do representation. That is the number one way to not do it. Well, guys, that's what I thought of Dead to Me Season 2. Thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Hit those comments to let me know how you felt about it, because overall, I felt like it was a watchable, fine enough show. I really like Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini, and I think they're paired really well. Surprisingly enough in this show, they both just do really great work, and it's watchable, but I mean, come on all of the storylines in the season were just garbage like subscribe do all of the things i'm contractually obligated to say to you because that's all for this video but i won't stop you from watching another